What is up guys? Welcome to Supercars of London down at Saxton 4x4 where I'm joined by one of the best value Defender 110s on the market. Approximately three years ago I got my first taste behind the wheel of the new Defender with Land Rover at their off-roading experience and then after that I came down to Saxton 4x4 and I actually filmed in that car parking space there a black Defender 90 with a really nice black and tan interior. But back then when they were 95, 100,000 pounds it was a completely different car and now this car is £54,000 and over the next four days I've got a thousand mile road trip over to Wales where I'm going to be bundling my siblings into the car along with our luggage as we head to Snowdonia National Park. The perfect place for a Land Rover Defender and the legends at Saxton 4x4 given the amount of stock that they've got have asked me to take this to give a review of what it is like in a used Land Rover Defender. So let's get into it and have a little look at this car. Now with the likes of Urban Automotive in existence with the way that they customize these cars, it can be quite easy to get blasé seeing some of the most monstrous defenders cruising around on the roads. And I've seen my fair share of these customized. There is something classy about a silver Defender 110, the classic launch spec. And I remember seeing this for the first time and it was a huge moment in Land Rover's history to reinvent the Defender. And I still think from some angles this looks like a concept SUV but let's get into the spec of this because this is going to be the perfect car for Wales. Now this is the angle that is my favorite this rear three quarter and rear shoulder here you've got a little bit of the curves the straight line down here and then the concept futuristic taillights there this is a D300 X Dynamic HSE and HSE basically means it has got all of the bells and whistles we've got the gloss black pack on the outside we've got everything you need inside don't know why the car's running i think i had it because of the screens on for the filming we've got a huge pan roof meridian surround sound we've got the cameras we've got apple carplay everything that you need but it's actually when you look closer at this car 67,000 miles a late 2000 car so around 22,000 miles a year these cars from land rover are built to last the interior the materials the fabrics the plastics everything still looks pretty much brand new there are no telltale signs that this is a high mileage example compared to SUVs that this car competes with you'd be able to see the Alcantara wearing the plush soft leather failing but here it was the one thing that I noticed almost straight away have a look at these seats the way this car has been looked after makes it a really exciting proposition 54 4,000 pounds for a Defender 110 with all of the spec you could ever ask for and a very powerful D300. So this is really the perfect car for my Welsh road trip. Over a thousand miles across the Snowdonia National Park and I myself am going to be summiting the mountain. It'd be quite interesting to actually test whether that could get to the top but seeing as this car is for sale at Saxon 4x4 I'd probably have to buy it before I could do that test. But I'm very excited to learn the pros and the cons. I've only ever experienced the Defender in a new car capacity so to finally get my hands on a used car one with all of the spec and a really attractive proposition as an actual ownership possibility not for myself as I'm very happy with my Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio but this isn't that much more per month so when you look at it it's quite a lot of car for money so I will be catching up with you on the other side of the weekend I'm going to film a bunch of stuff up in Snowdonia and I will see you on Monday for a bit of a debrief. Pros and cons of a used Defender 110. So the night before the road trip began, I filled the car up 128 pounds worth of fuel to the brim, and I wasn't that confident that it was gonna be fuel efficient in the slightest, given the size of it, and also the shape of it, the weight of it. I didn't have that much confidence, especially seeing some of the low 30s, late 20s around town. I was a little bit nervous that we had over 600 miles to go up to Chester Zoo and then across to Snowdonia National Park. So I picked my brother and sister up at 5.30 in the morning and we had 190 miles to cover to head up to Chester Zoo. A zoo that is arguably one of the best in the UK. And it isn't a secret on this channel that I'm a big fan of wildlife. Only a matter of months ago did I go on safari down to South Africa and I've already rebooked 
to go back again. But the zoo was fantastic, as was the car. I slipped it into eco mode, started to see 39, 40 MPG, and my confidence started to come back. But the car's effortless on the motorway, just feathering the accelerator. And the way this car is built, I've mentioned it in the video already, but actually experiencing it, this car felt closer to a 10,000 mile example, as opposed to the 67,000 miles that this car has actually done. It is a really impressive feat for Land Rover to build these cars in these modern times and it still feel as tight and as good as you would imagine as a brand new one. So Chester Zoo, very, very good, can highly recommend it. Then we headed over to Snowdonia National Park where we could check into our Airbnb and get ready for the Snowden climb the following morning. And my God, were we lucky with the weather window that we had on the Saturday morning because <laughs> after we had summited the mountain, which was a 5.30 start, an incredibly long morning, but after a few miles bars and a grenade bar, we had enough sugar and energy to get us up to the top and back down. But as we were coming back down, the rain started to pick up and the wind was relentless. So we timed it to absolute perfection. And you might argue, would you have rather blue sky and sunshine for the climb, like what we had at the zoo, but if you were to swap it around, would you really want to walk around the zoo in torrential rain? Probably not. I think we timed it very well and planned the weekend to perfection. So blue sky and sunshine for the zoo, ideal. We had a dry spell to get up to the top of Snowdon. The rain started to come down as we were going back down. And then for the rest of the weekend, it was torrential rain and wind which actually was the perfect timing all round, and the Defender was the perfect companion for our entire road trip. We did 595 miles across the entire weekend on the same tank of fuel that I filled up on the Thursday evening. We got back to my mum's where I dropped my sister and brother off and still had 65 miles of range. It was so good. And the fact that it was a rugged utilitarian SUV SUV that I didn't feel too precious about meant that when we got to the Snowden car park it was already full even at around 6.15 that we were advised that you could go down even further down the mountain and there was a tarmac to lay by and of course that was already full too but on the other side of the road there was this drop-off that I thought this car it's the perfect car to be able to get this off road. So I dropped it off the curb, parked it up almost in our own VIP parking. And by the time that we had got back, this shows how good the Defender is. There was another Defender parked next to us. So we were very much in the right car for the trip. And what this has done is opened my eyes to the used car world of Land Rover and the Defender because it's kind of known that Land Rovers have teething issues when they're brand new, but buying used means that previous owners have already eradicated some of the technological and sensor issues on the car, meaning that when you jump into this, for example, it is a seamless automobile from start to finish. Super comfy, Apple CarPlay. It had so many optional extras that were necessary, especially after the Snowden climb, like heated steering wheel, heated seats, front and rear. We had 360 cameras, so parking the car up next to the rocks was easy. It was an absolute dream. So I'm very happy I got to experience a real used Land Rover Defender in this scenario and it was the absolute ultimate vehicle to take up into the Welsh Highlands so I'm driving back to Saxton's now a massive thumbs up for the used Land Rover Defender market and the D300 in particular highly recommend for those long drives eco mode definitely saved the day and I'll leave the video there guys. I will leave a link in the description actually so that you can check out all of the Defenders that are for sale at Saxton 4x4. They have a variety of engines, models, specs as always. So if silver is not the one for you, I'm 
almost certain that they will have one that is in the color that you're after. And also, spec is so important, and this one is absolutely bang on. My brother and sister loved it. What a weekend. Saxton, thank you very much for this car. I will drop it back to you in one piece. I will see you soon, guys. Take care. Goodbye.